This video will cover LAS dataset properties in ArcMap, as is covered in more detail in Chapter 7 of the ebook Working with LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop. We're going to begin in ArcMap with either one of your Albuquerque datasets loaded into the map document. I'm going to start by zooming in a bit so we can get a good view of how our point cloud changes as we play around with the layer properties. So we're going to right click on the Albuquerque dataset and go to Layer Properties and we're going to start in the Filter tab. We can change which classification codes and which returns are displayed in our map document. I'm just clicking on each of these in turn and then making sure to hit the Apply button and because we're zoomed in here you can get a bit of a view of how the point cloud changes based on which filters we apply. This is not actually changing the data set itself, which is important to remember, but it is important to know what filters we are using currently before we go to the Symbology tab, which is what we will be covering next. So I'm making sure I have all classes and all returns both selected before clicking on the Symbology tab. And here we're going to change the classification scheme. So click on Classify and we're going to go and change the method to equal interval and use 14 classes and once you've selected that you click OK and again we need to also make sure that we use the apply button to view any changes that we've made. Now that my point cloud is displayed in the classification I want I'm going to come over here and add some renderers available with the LES data sets. I click on add and the add renderer dialog appears with some different options. I'm going to select the first option and notice that the renderer name appears under the show box in the symbology tab. This is the same one that we already have in the map document so I'm going to delete it by selecting it and then clicking remove. Let's add the LAS attribute, contour, face aspect, and face elevation renderers all to our symbology. Once I've added all of these different renderers that I want I can just click dismiss and then over on my layer properties I'm going to click apply. Now right now I'm actually displaying all of these different rendering methods at once but I can only see elevation because that's the renderer that's displayed on top. So to get a better view of all these different renderers I'm going to first uncheck everything but elevation and then I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to actually close out this box here by clicking OK and then I'm going to go to full extent so I can see my entire data set at once. Now I can go back and explore the results of each of these different renderers by using the check boxes there under the show table on the left hand side and after each change that I make I'm going to make sure I click apply and then you'll see the change in your map. The book goes into more detail about what exactly you're seeing here with the different renderers and their properties and their values. Um, note that I have to click on the name of the renderer like here under aspect in order to actually see the aspect values. And that's an important thing to remember about this layer properties box. So the last thing we're going to do is turn on the contour symbology and use the arrows to move it to the top of our display. So to do that again I'm going to need to actually select contour, the name there, and then use the up arrow. And then I'm going to turn elevation on underneath of it. And this is one case where I can actually display these two different renderers together. So lastly in here I'm going to come in and change my contour interval and this is in meters so I'm changing it to one meter and hit apply. And this just gives me a little bit more detail with my contours. And of course there's lots of different combinations you can play around with in here with these different renderers and their values and their settings. And we're going to move on next to working in the display tab. So first we're going to take a look over here at our data percentage in our table of contents. And this number is referring to the percentage of our total over 6 million points that are actually being displayed here. The next thing we're going to do is come over to our layer properties box and we're going to check always display file extents and then we're also going to check display LAS file names. And you can see now if you look in the map document behind the properties box that we now have outlines for our six different data sets and also their names. Now we're going to play around a little bit with the point density slider. 
Um, so we will slide it all the way to course. Make sure you hit apply to look at the changes and you can see that our data gets a bit blockier and also that data percentage number goes down quite a bit. And you can also try the opposite and push it, push it all the way up to fine. And again, you'll see changes in both what's displayed and that data percentage number. So now we're going to set that point density slider back to the middle where we started from and we're going to play around with changing the point limit and look at how that changes our data percentage. So first we're going to go up to 1 million and click apply and you'll note the data percentage changes and we don't see a lot of changes in the map document window when we're changing the point limit unless we're zoomed in pretty far. Um, well you can also change it up to 4 million this. and your numbers will probably vary a little bit depending on your screen resolution um, and just a number of different factors so your numbers won't turn out exactly the same as they do here or in the book. Next we're going to try zooming in and here you can actually get a better look at how the point limit will change what's being displayed and what's being sampled. And that's it for this tutorial. We are all finished here and we are finished using the Albuquerque files. Our next tutorial for Chapter 8 will be on exploring the LAS dataset toolbar in ArcMap. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing, outreach, education, and research, with funding from the America View Consortium, in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.